Have you ever noticed that when you're around someone who's feeling sad, you start to feel a bit sad too? Or have you caught yourself saying something and thought that you sounded just like your best friend? Or have you ever noticed that when you're around someone who's doing certain habits, you start to pick them up too? <laughs> what am I doing? Ugh. Ever wondered why that happens? And I'm sure you've all heard the saying how you are the average of the people you surround yourself with and even the content you consume and it's true, but why? One of the greatest discoveries in neuroscience is the existence of mirror neurons in your brain. Tiny brain cells that can literally turn into a carbon copy of your surroundings for better or for worse. So the moods, attitudes and behaviors of those around you will significantly influence your own in ways that are quite fascinating and also a little bit scary. But now let's talk about the science and how you can leverage the power of these neurons to completely transform your life. All right, let's start with the basics, neurons. Neurons are your brain cells. You've got about a hundred billions of them and they're essentially what makes you who you are. They store information, generate your thoughts, control your movements and regulate your emotions. So every action you take, every thought you have, every emotion you feel, it's all because of them. But neurons are also how you learn things. When you learn something new, your neurons communicate with each other by sending electrical impulses along their axons, which is this long instruction that you can see below, and across these tiny gaps called synapses to other neurons. This process is often described as firing. And here's the fascinating part. When neurons fire together frequently, they form stronger connections. This is what in neuroscience is meant by wiring. Hence the famous phrase, neurons that fire together, wire together. And this principle is fundamental to how we learn literally anything. Because the more we think, feel, and act a certain way, the stronger the connections become, which then makes those thoughts, emotions, and behaviors completely automatic. It becomes who you are, your very mental software program. But now let's connect this to mirror neurons. Mirror neurons are a special type of neurons that are like tiny copycats in your brain. They fire not just when you do something, but also when you watch someone else do it. For example, if you watch someone picking up a cup, your mirror neurons fire as if you were actually picking up the cup yourself. Or if you repeatedly watch someone being grumpy all the time, chances are you might just start screaming at your waiter when your drink doesn't get refilled in the next three seconds. So this means that our brains are literally wired for imitation. Mirror neurons were discovered by accident by Italian neuroscientists in the 90s. In the studies, researchers found that specific neurons in a monkey's brain would activate not only when the monkey performed that action, like eating food, but also when you observe another monkey, or even a human in this case, performing the same action. In other words, the monkey's brain was reacting as if the monkey had actually taken and eaten the food just by observing another monkey do that. In 2009, they also expanded on this finding, discovering that mirror neurons are also involved in understanding the intentions behind every action. For example, if a monkey sees another monkey pick up something with the intention of eating it, the mirror neurons will fire differently than if the object was being picked up for a different purpose. Going back to the example of watching someone picking up a cup, your brain can actually understand whether that person is thirsty, cleaning up, or preparing to hand it to someone else. Fascinating, huh? So now that we have a good understanding of what mirror neurons are and how they were discovered, let's explore a bit their impact on our lives, because they're the reason of how everyone and everything in your environment molds you into who you are. Now, mirror neurons are also deeply involved in understanding emotions. When you see someone smiling, for example, your mirror neurons fire in the same way as if you were smiling yourself. This is also known as emotional contagion. You know, if I just start smiling right now, you'll see you're going to start smiling too. Why not? And <laughs> this neural mirroring is fundamental to our ability to empathize with others. It's what allows us to feel the emotions of those around us, making human connections richer and more meaningful. But of course, as you can guess, there's also a little downside to this. Because if you hang out with someone who's always anxious, chances are you'll start feeling that anxiety too. And remember what I said at the beginning of the video about neurons that fire together, wire together. So the stronger the connection, the more it becomes automatic for you to be that way. So by repeatedly surrounding yourself with people that are always down, always stressed, always angry, always complaining, eventually you become that too. And it's not because of some magical reasons, it's just a little bit of neuroscience. But the opposite is also true. If you surround yourself with positive and happy people, just watch how you're going to feel happier all the time. Or if you surround yourself with disciplined and healthy people, trust me, you're going to become disciplined and healthy too. And this applies to even wealth. Hang out with wealthy people and chances are you become wealthy too because that's a completely different mindset. I've experienced this firsthand in my life so many times without even realizing it. That's why it's so important to understand the science behind it so you can become more aware and more careful of everyone around you because this happens to you whether you want it or not. 
I remember I always pick up the habits and behaviors of the people I surrounded myself with, which for the most part were not very good ones. And by the way, this is literally how you eventually become someone else. Sometimes the shortcut to change is to forget about all the books and just change your environment. Because when you change your environment, you change your life. Now there's something left that we need to discuss. Because it's not just the people you're around, it's also what you watch and consume on a daily basis. Your favorite TV shows, movies, and even the videos you watch online are all shaping you more than you might even think. When you watch a movie, for example, your brain doesn't just passively absorb the story because your mirror neurons are working behind the scenes, making you feel what the characters feel. As Dr. Julia Maria, head of the cerebrocranial neurosurgery in the Humanitas Research Hospital said, our mirror neurons activate when we see an actor making a gesture, performing an action, or getting emotional. If an actor gets excited, the same neurons in our brain light up, making us feel that excitement. But here's where it gets really interesting because mirror neurons also influence our behavior behaviors and attitudes. Think about if you're constantly watching shows where characters solve problems through violence, your brain starts to normalize that behavior. Even if you're not going to go out and kill people to solve your problems, because thankfully you've got more than just mirror neurons in your brain, I hope, your brain is still learning those patterns. And of course, our mirror neurons don't stop just at movies and TV shows, they also work when we play video games or scroll through social media. And this is so powerful, it means everything you consume can solidly shape your thoughts, beliefs and behaviors. Through repeated exposure to certain ideals and norms, what you consume can manipulate your perception of reality, brainwashing you without you even realizing it. So first, cut down on TV and all of this excessive entertainment. And just on a small note, you know, on a Average, people spend about three hours a day watching TV, which if you do the math is a full month and a half every year. And over your lifetime is actually nine years of your life. Nine years. Think about what you could do with that time. And second, consume content that uplifts you and make you a better person. Remember, your brain is incredibly plastic and it's always adapting to what you feed it. Like this video is probably very good for your brain. So if you haven't done so already, please click on the subscribe button below, like this video, and let's make the content we consume a tool for positive change. Thank you. All right, now that we know how powerful our mirror neurons are, Let's talk about how you can use this knowledge to your advantage because it's not just about understanding these concepts but about applying them in your life starting now. So let's break it down into a very nice action plan. One, evaluate your circle. It's said that you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So take a close look at the people around you. Are they lifting you or dragging you down? And this is what I want you to do. Step one, grab a journal and make a list. Start by making a list of the 5-10 people you spend the most time with. This can be like your friends, family, members, co-workers, anyone who have a significant presence in your life. Step 2. Evaluate their influence. For each person on your list, ask yourself these questions. Do they inspire me and motivate me? Do they support my goals and dreams? Do they bring positivity into my life? Do they challenge me to become a better person? Step 3. Identify energy drainers. Be honest with yourself. Identify anyone in your list who constantly complains, criticizes, or brings negativity into your life. These are the energy drainers you need to start spending a lot less time with. Step 4. Make a plan. Decide how you can gradually reduce time with negative influences and increase time with those who are lift you. It might mean scheduling more coffees with positive friends and politely declining invitations from negative ones. Make the plan and act on it. Don't just listen to me. Make the plan. Step five, seek new connections. You need to start looking for opportunities to meet new people who possess the qualities you admire. Join clubs, attend events, classes, or even participate in online communities that align with your interests and values. Do everything you can possibly can to start meeting new people. There was a time in my life when I was surrounded by negativity. I was constantly stressed, constantly anxious, unhappy, and, and I wasn't really myself. It was until I made a conscious effort to completely change my surroundings that I started to feel better. And in my case, slowly but surely, I literally got rid of almost all of my old friendships and to this day, I'm extremely selective of what I did in my life. Trust me, this alone can make all the difference. Now let's talk about curating your media because the content you consume daily is shaping you without you even realizing it. So here's what I want you to do. Step one, audit your media. Go through your social media feeds, TV show, books, podcasts, and even the music you listen to. Take some time to audit your current media consumption. Step two, unfollow, unsubscribe, and remove. Identify the accounts and sources that constantly spread negativity, fear, or just things you don't want in your life. And just get rid of them. You don't need them anymore, trust me. 
Step three, follow positive influences. Find and follow accounts, sources, and music that inspire, educate, and uplift you. And if you really want to watch something during dinner or find something that you can listen to while you drive, you can keep your mind filled with good and productive content. I remember I used to watch the news first thing in the morning and I would feel so stressed as soon as I'd wake up. Or how I used to follow accounts that would constantly make me feel down as I used to compare my life to theirs. Oh, not to mention the music I used to listen to. Those lyrics in those songs were really not good for my brain. But now let's talk about my favorite part of this little action plan, which is be the change. Yes, be the change you want to see in the world. Work on yourself. Who do you want to be? And work on becoming it. When you express positivity, kindness, and empathy, the mirror neurons of those around you will start firing like that too. If you're happy, optimistic, and full of energy, you'll rub off onto others and they won't be able to help but feel the same as you. And maybe you got some people in your life that are not serving you too good, but you care for them and you don't want to get rid of them right now, so you can be the change that will inspire them to change too. Because you cannot force anyone to change, it will never work and you can trust me on that. The best thing you can do when you want others to change is to change yourself. Thanks for watching. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And let me know in the comments, what actions are you going to start taking? Remember, you change your environment and you change your life.